Okay, so let's look at the third way we can use synth to continually refine a design over and over. And in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to create a set of new inserts that I can use in other synth recipes. So let's get started. First, I'm going to do is select everything and delete it. And with that done, I'll go Shift A, Mesh, Plane, tab into it, A to select all, E will extrude it down and they'll tab back out. And then with it tabbed out, I'm gonna go under here and I'm gonna say face orientation. I've mapped that to a to a Q key right here. So I've got face orientation mapped to a Q key. And notice that they're all red and I need to flip them. So I'll go tab, A, and I'll go under mesh, normals, recalculate outside, which is shift in. And so that works. Now you're wondering, why is this not blue? And the reason for it is I set up under preferences a specific theme. It's under 3D viewport. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll see face orientation front. So if I click here and I look at this alpha number and I move it, you'll see that it changes to blue. I don't want, so I want to basically only show the faces that are red. And that's what these orientation black are. So you can see that's got a bit of an alpha. So I've done that and saved it. And so that's how I use that. And that's a really important thing for me. And the reason why that's really important is in 2.91, you'll find that the new Boolean modifier, the exact mode, needs to have not only a manifold object, which is an object that's watertight, as well as it needs to have all the faces facing outwards, or else the Booleans aren't gonna work correctly. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's go ahead and scale this to something that we think that we may wanna. I may say, well, how do I know what size I wanna make it? Well, I'm gonna go into synth, delete a layer, add a layer, and I'm gonna go into the S scaled K pack, and I'm gonna choose just a switch that I wanna use, and I will say do it. Well, first, actually, I need to tab into this, select just the face I wanna use, and then I'll say do it, and you'll see, okay, so that's too big. Why is that too big? Well, we have them scaling proportionally, but what we don't have is over here, we wanna say don't scale, because I wanna create an insert that is at the correct scale. So when I insert it, I know that every time I insert, it'll come in at the correct scale. So now I'll say do it again, and you'll see that, oh, okay, so here's, here's the row of switches that we have. So what I'm gonna do now is go under Kit Ops and always leave Smart off and turn off Auto Select and I'll make things move quite a bit faster. So now I'm gonna move this to something like this and move this out just a little bit like that and go up into Synth and I'll say do it again. And now you see I've got, uh, okay, that looks actually pretty good. So I like the way that's coming together. I might go ahead and add another switch. Now notice if I click this little button here, it's gonna automatically populate every one of these below with the same K-Pack, which is really handy. So I'll go and turn this on and I'm gonna grab that other switch, which is a red one. And I'm gonna do the same thing and say, don't scale the insert and I'll say do it. And you'll see now we've populated with some different ones. Now this is kind of a unique little label, by the way. You can see that all these labels are unique in the sense that every time you replace them, they generate a new word. And that word can be edited in a texture map. So we can talk more about that later. Now I may want to have this just a little bit farther apart in this direction. So I'll move it out just a little more and say do it. And it's, it's jamming more in. So really the best thing to do in this case is we're going to go to the placement style. And instead of rows, I'm going to use a grid. And I want it one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna do a three by five grid. Let's look at the uh, top view real quick. So I'm gonna go into the grid and my rows, I'm gonna say are gonna be three and my columns are five. And then I'll go up here and say, do it. And then you can see that looks a lot better. And I can also adjust things like the padding if I want, but I think we're in pretty good shape here. So with this selected, I'll go up here and I'm gonna call this switches, this layer switches and I'm gonna clear it. And then I'm gonna extend this out just a little bit more, maybe like this. And I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna move it up. And I'm gonna call this one, one dot base. So this is gonna be uh, the first thing I'm gonna to do to this. And I'm gonna call this one here, two dot switches. And I'm gonna turn switches off. And with one dot base, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna select in the S not scaled. I'll go and select this T-Rack Handles, and I'll turn this proportional editing off, and I'll say do it. And you'll see I've got three rows, and that's not really what I want, so I'll go grid, grids one by one, do it again, and there's our rack. So we know that now we have 
this rack object and we have one flipped face. So what I'm gonna do, this is the part where I'm gonna talk about why I've numbered this one and two. The number one is the first thing we're gonna do. And once we, once we change the numbers between changes, I'm gonna just go in here and under tools, I'm gonna to bake the object and remove unused wires. And let's just go ahead and set, set this to be dark matte also. Okay, so now we're in pretty good shape. So this is the new object. This, this is the uh, handle. You can see that this is part of a handle. And I'm gonna take this object and I'm gonna tab into it. I'm gonna select just this plane and I'll say, and I'll go into x-ray mode and say control R. And then I'm gonna scroll the mouse wheel once and I'll get that. And then I'll drag to the right and then right click at the same time so it leaves it there. And then I can just pull these out to where I want them because I want them to be this, something like that. So then I'll turn off the x-ray mode and go into our face mode, I'm gonna select this object, right? So with this object selected, I'll go in, and this is where we actually would turn on the switches ones, and we're gonna hit do it. And it's gonna put the switches in the place we want to, but notice it deleted everything else. Why is that? Well, that's because we're using fast Booleans. And so in our optimization, I wanna say exact Booleans, and then I can come up here and say do it. And now you can see that we're in good shape. This is gonna be a pretty good start for our panel with the one exception that, you, as you can see, it's going a little too far here. So what I could do is just say clear and I can go back in and tab into this. And with that selected, say Control R again, scroll it once and let's move this out so that it's so, something like this. So just, and then tab back in and select just this face, tab out and say, do it and see what happens with the switches now. Now they're all overlapping on each other and you can see we're not quite where we want to be on this. And I might just make that either two columns. The other thing I can do is I want to just adjust this. I know that we're at the right scale now, so I could actually turn this off and change the scale to something like 50. Turn this off and change the channel to 50. And then I'll scroll up here and say, do it. And now I'm gonna turn on auto update because I wanna adjust these till they get to just the right size. So I'll go 75, 75. And up, uh, still a little bit too big. So we'll go 65 and 65. And in this case, I might wanna go ahead and go into my placement style and add yet another column. So instead of five, we'll add six. There we go, so we can see. So this is kind of how you can use synth in this over and over iteration mode, real time, to design your objects. Now, now I wanna do, I just wanna turn this into something that I can then place into another recipe. And so how I do that is with everything selected, I'll, I'll keep this selected, I'm gonna go over here, turn off auto update, and I'll bake the object, remove unused wire inserts, and now I'm gonna look at this, I'm gonna say, okay, so let's tab into this. So what I'll do now is I'm just gonna go here and just select these faces and the bottom one. And I've got those selected and that's gonna be my cutter and I'll just say P separate by selection and that's gonna create a, a new plane 001 in here. So with that being separated, I am actually gonna tab back out and I'll hide that. This is what I have left, turn that back on. With that selected, I'll go in orth orthographic view and I'm going to move it up something like this, something that I know that will allow me to cut into nicely, something like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna look at that and I can tab into that, hit A and hit F to fill it. So now we know that it's a solid. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna say that and I'll hit the A button. So I've got everything with this being the last thing selected, the orange thing, and I'll go into object, parent, object, and what I wanna do is make sure that I keep the transforms on on this. And now that we're done with that, I'll take this whole file and I'm gonna save it into one of my K-Packs. So I'll just say file, save as, and we're gonna put it in the assembly K-Pack. I'm gonna call this one three by six switch bank. And I'll save it. And now, of course, KitOps goes away and now we're in our KitOps factory mode. So this is the, uh, we've opened it up and first thing I'm gonna do is, actually we'll just go up here to inserts and I'm gonna say X, delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that. So now we have, I've deleted all these collections and all I have is the, this one object and all of the objects inside of it. So, and with that selected, I'll go in and I'll just call that a cutter and that's our difference cutter. 
and let's go Z, look at this, and let's then do clean duplicate materials. See, so we removed two materials that were duplicates, and then I always use Power Save to purge orphans at this point, and I deleted 91 data blocks, and I'm not sure what it deleted there, but it might have been images, it might have been part of the displays, that we, the, the images that these were being used from, I don't know, but it, it, it kind of deletes and cleans up stuff. So that's really important, that's Power Save, it's free, and this Purge Orphans is one of the most powerful add-ons that, uh, and the most regularly used add-ons that I use. So I'm just letting you know there. So now that we're done, we're we're really ready to look at this as a uh, insert. Now the problem is, is when I insert this, it's going to insert it at this center point, which which is not what I want. So I will just say, with this selected, I'll say A, select everything, and I'll do Control A, and I'll say I want everything to be scaled into the correct scale, and then. I'm going to select the outside one, control A, and watch what happens to the center point, control A, and say, all transforms. And there it is. Uh, now, so the other thing is that, notice it comes in upside down, so I just have to rotate this uh, minus 180, it can take a rotation, so we have that. So now we're set, and I hit the save insert. Now, I could do file save insert over here, but if I do this, it's also going to clean up some of the property issues and things like that. So I always, at least during the beginning, I try and save here at least once. Now once that's done, I'll say load render scene and camera to insert. And I can hit Q, lock camera to view, but I can also go over here under item, under, I'm sorry, view, and say camera to view right here. I have that map to a Q key also, but I'll go like this and with it locked to view. I'll kind of move it around to where, where I like it, render it and then go to kit ops and say render the thumbnail. Now that's done, I'm gonna say file, new, general, and let's just tab into this, grab the top of that, and let's go into synth, add a new layer, and I'm gonna go into this assemblies, and we'll find the one we just created, which is this one, three by six, and we'll just say do it. And there you have it, we've used synth to create inserts for yet another synth recipe, so that's a new Thing that we can do. So that's a really uh, interesting and quick way of showing you how you can use synth over and over to iterate on designs. It's one of the ways that we've used to create these images here, which as you can see are very structured and controlled and uh, work really well. So I hope you enjoy that and we'll see you online. Bye.